Welcome to the Beefy Bet segment. We're going to be going over our favorite bets and really every fight, but we'll tell you our favorites. We're going to give you a parlay of the week. We're going to give you a dog of the week. And we're going to give you a couple props of the week as well. Um, you know, we're green on the year, uh, you know, on a little bit of a skid here, but it's a get right week on this Apex fight night. Um, sometimes I feel like the lower end fights are easier to pick than the higher end fights because you get some wonky matchmaking. Um, some some guys that maybe the public's not all the way in on to bet the line a certain way. Uh, so so yeah, we can't, can't wait to get to get into the weeds with you. How you doing, Harrison? I'm good, man. I'm good, and I honestly couldn't agree more with this being a card that um, you know no one's really talking about. It's honestly it feels. I'll be honest. This is a bad card. If we're talking oh, about yeah. like name value, <laughs> if we're talking about fights that matter, this is a bad card. However, as a hardcore, there's actually all these fights are fun matchups. They're mostly close fights, and I think there's a lot of value here from a betting perspective as well. Yeah, I mean, talking bad card, I have like five certified cans on this card. <laughs> Not a great stat you want to be having betters. a lot of good for betters, and that's what we're going to get to here. Um, yeah, and this 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 card has a lot of. Um, if you watched our latest episode of the Beefy Boys Breakdown, and we're going to make this this into a separate video. I don't believe it's uploaded yet. Might be uploaded by the time this video gets uploaded. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But uh, we we obviously we talk about cans here. That's a vernacular that fight fans and fight betters um, use. You know, can means like you're not good. Like you're not cutting the mustard. We're, we're going to bet against you. Um, can means you know you're, you're not really up to snuff. But then we realize there's like this middle tier right outside the can tier that we like to call koozies. What's on the outside of a can? A koozie, right? Keeps you cold. And like there's these koozie tier of fighters that are like clearly not elite, but clearly not dog shit. And this this card has a lot of matchups. It's like koozie on can. Right. So as a better, I kind of like betting the koozie as a can because us having it as a koozie like, you're obviously better than the can tier. Um, so we have a few of those matchups. Um, let's start at the main main event, main card, you know, uh, while we got the people's attention. Leroy Murphy versus Edson Barbosa. Classic, you know, young up-and-comer versus, you know, almost borderline legendary vet, but kind of trending downwards. I, I don't know, man. Um, I actually just rewatched the Leroy Murphy, Coley Bow, and it's like, Leroy Murphy definitely beat Coley Bell. I think the 30-26 scorecards didn't love those. Um, Agreed. It was a pretty competitive fight, closer than the scorecards, especially the 30-26 scorecards would have you have you lean in. And then, you know, we go, you think of Barbosa as an older guy trending downwards, as I just alluded to, but, I mean, I think he's won his last two fights, last one being against Sadiq Yusuf, which didn't age great, but at the time he beat him, I think Yusuf was around ranked 10 somewhere in that ballpark um so i don't know man i'm going murphy but i'm honestly just going one star like yeah he's younger yeah he's undefeated but i mean cola Bell was having success and like i, I just couldn't like when i was re-watching that cola Bell fight i was like man if these are barbosa landing maybe it's different than a cola Bell shot landing because cola Bell was having some success i agree however here's what i will say to that is i do remember the sadiq use of fighting against Edison barbosa well Edson Barboza almost got finished rounds one and two, and then won rounds three, four, and five, which was crazy. But it was more so Yusuf just blowing his load, fumbling the bag. And I don't think that Leroy Murphy's going to do that. I think he's a more calculated striker as well. Um, I think he has good leg kick defense and good leg kick offense, which would be important here against Barbosa. I actually have Leroy Murphy as a two star for myself. I really like Leroy Murphy at the minus 140 this week. That, that's so so the Barbosa money is coming in when I looked it was minus 155 um so for what that's worth um man I was just watching that Murphy Cola Bell fight and it's just like Murphy seems like one of these guys who's like pretty good at everything but not great at one thing like the power didn't really seem to be there and Cola Bell's kind of a small 145er Barbosa former 55er obviously jacked to the gills uh I don't know, man. I just re I'm really glad I rewatched that Murphy Cole about fight because on paper you see undefeated, you see the age gap, and you're like, oh, let's get this Murphy bet in. Re I'm really glad I rewatched that fight to have it fresh in my memory because, like I said, the power, lackluster, the takedowns. He could barely take down Coley Bow. Um, but I imagine Barbosa is going to be harder to take down than Coley Bow. 
He was he didn't fight and then like yeah so he fought almost like a decision pace but we haven't seen Murphy in five round fights so like what does a decision pace or a decision fighter look like in his first five round fights? Yeah, I don't know. This is a one star for me. I probably won't put any real money on it. I'll probably pick Murphy by decision on verdict. Um, yeah, I've talked a lot. I'll turn over the floor to you before we keep it pushing. Um, you said you were pretty bullish on on Murphy just. Outside of the age gap, just kind of elaborate. You mentioned the leg kick offense, leg kick defense. Anything else you want to add? No, I mean, it's more so just uh, at some point Edson Barboza's age will catch him. I like Leroy Murphy's trajectory if you look at his start in the UFC. He continually, even though the Colabau fight was close, I like Josh Colabau if, if you're going to just stand up and fight him. So I think all things considered... I just think Murphy's going to be able to press Barbosa to the cage when they get in too close. I think he's the more physical fighter between the two of them. I, I just have a I just have a lean to Murphy. See, I get it, but that's because are you thinking about Sadiq Yusuf? Because Yusuf honestly blew his load. Like if he doesn't do that, he probably beats Barbosa all five rounds. He was dog walking him and tried to finish him twice. No man, and I guess I'm talking out of both sides of my neck here because I'm questioning. Leroy Murphy's five round cardio, but like when I was watching that Cole Bell fight, one of the things that jumped off to me is like, yes, Murphy's athletic, but I don't know that he's explosive. Like when you're saying out physically, like Barbosa's an explosive athlete. Oh, I, like, no, I mean be able to hold him on the fence, like in a clinch and nullify the athletic. Yeah. Athletes. Yeah, yeah, perhaps, perhaps. I just Murphy seemed like he has like like I guess slow twitch athleticism. Like I think he'd be a better long distance track runner than he would a sprinter. Like I just didn't see that explosiveness out of him, which maybe that helps him in a five round fight. And like you said, Murphy or Sadiq Yusuf was very explosive and gassed himself. So so maybe I'm talking out of both sides of my neck here. But I mean and then as far as my power rankings go, I have Murphy at fourteen, Barbosa at eighteen. That's another reason why I'm going one star here, not a big gap in my personal power rankings. But uh I mean we're both picking Murphy here. Harrison likes him more than I do. You know, um, take that for for what it's worth. I definitely don't think it's going on any either of our parlays. I don't know. Are you you thinking par, a Murphy parlay candidate? Or? I honestly, he's like maybe a fourth or fifth leg if I want to get some some action going because he does have the Ricardo Hamosh KO, which you know it's not not the best. The Mac one of Mirkani KO. Ah, who cares? That was a highlight KO though because he did one one punch starch him. And I do think yeah. Leroy Murphy has that ability. It's just, does he connect that slower shot? Because it is slower. I'll give you that. Like, he does not have the best hand speed. Barbosa is known for being fast, but I almost wonder if Barbosa is going to start slow like he did these last couple fights. And if he eats one from Leroy Murphy, I don't, I mean, he survives Sadiq Yusuf, but Yusuf is just, I'm fading Yusuf so hard. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm on record as not being a Yusuf guy. I don't know. I just like, I remember being all zeked up about, you know, the undefeated Leroy Murphy getting his first main event and, like, do we got a guy, guy here? And maybe it's all the fraud checks happening lately. Maybe that's also in my mind. Maybe I'm being <laughs> skewed here by all the all, all last week, you know, Night of the Living fraud checks. And I, I this uh, this may be another fraud check. Fraud check warning. You know, we were Oklahoma boys. You got the tornado warnings, tornado watches. Maybe not warning. Fraud check watch here. Fraud check watch. Uh, fraud Fra check I, watch. I'll, I'll give you fraud <laughs> check watch, but uh, yeah. Things said and done. I like Murphy. Let's keep it pushing. <clears throat> we got Chaos Williams, minus 130, taking on Carlson Harris, plus 110 in the co-main. Call me crazy. I like Carlson Harris. I like Carlson Harris at two. Um, two stars. Potential same, same. dog of the week. Same. Potential dog Agree of with the all. week. So, Agree with all. So I mean, is 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 Chaos Williams and um, Jeremiah Wells not very similar fighters? I right? think they're extremely similar, except that Chaos probably wants to go more for the striking. Wells wants to go more for the wrestling. But Wells, I mean, yeah, he can strike about as good as Chaos. I mean, maybe not quite as good, but he can wrestle a little better. I don't know. Carlson Harris showed me a lot whenever he he fought Wells because is that the one where Wells survived? Yeah. Well, that's the one where Wells, Wells won, is winning. Like and we bet well, yeah, we, and we were he heated. won like ninety percent of the fight, and then yeah, uh, Carlson pulls out whether it was a gilly or whatever sub it was, subbed him last minute. Um, and I just I see I see Chaos Williams as kind of a similar style style athlete to Wells, similar style fighter to Wells. 
Um, similar level of fight IQ to Wells. Like I think the stuff that Carlson Car Wells in, he could potentially catch chaos in. Um, yeah, we both like Carlson Harris, and that's why I mean, if you're if you're searching for value, like I'd rather call me crazy. I know it's a dog, but I trust Harrison more. Or ha I keep saying Harrison, Carlson <laughs> Harris more than I trust Leroy Murphy this week. Call me crazy. I like him more. I mean. I guess yes and no. I, I, I like him equally. So that's where, obviously, why I'm saying yeah. yes and no. I, but I'm above two stars, so. Well, and then uh, real quick, catching on the power rankings here, I have Harris at 25 and Williams at 36. So that's a deep division. Like, I think both of these guys, like, the winner of this fight starts getting some names, starts getting some card placement. I mean, this is a come in. I mean, it's a dog shit come in on a dog shit card. But, um I mean, so they're already getting the card placement. I think the winner of this fight has maybe, like, some big things coming in their future. I could see the winner of this fight getting, like, a Brian Battle or a Fokker Dinov, like, that kind of caliber of fighter. So, um, yeah, I mean, I got an 11-spot power rankings gap. I, Chaos Williams, yeah, he's an athlete, but he fights kind of like a meathead. Carlston Harris, clearly, you know, slightly more heady fighter, better fight IQ, I would say. Absolutely. Um, good cardio. I think he has the cardio advantage here. Um, yeah, we both like Harris two stars. As a dog, strong dog of the week candidate. Strong dog. Uh, let's see how the line has moved real fast on that one before we keep it pushing. I want to see if there's been any money one way or the other. Uh, Carlson Harris opened at 105 and is now plus 115 and has gotten to plus 122 at its highest. So a little bit of money on Chaos Williams, but it sounds like that's... I like that, though. Like as, a, as a Harris better, yeah, it's right. helping us out. Right, I agree with you. Uh, let's keep it pushing. I think this next fight is unbelievable that it's the third fight on the card. I think it's crazy that Adrian Yanez has fallen so far out of grace that he has to fight behind these guys. Probably more Salvador's doing, but in this fight I'm talking about Stimma Grimbo, minus 140, taking on Ramiz Brahimai, plus 120. Uh, I have Grimbo two stars. See, I have this as a no bet. I am kind of down on both of these guys. This is kind of koozie on koozie violence here. I won't say can. Um, like, I think both of these guys lose to the welterweights we just discussed, both of them. Um, I think this is a lower level fight. Um, yeah, I mean, I as far as power rankings go, I have Denver Garimba. One spot against Brahimai, like I said, both guys in the koozie tier, bottom end of the koozie tier, shall I add. I actually um, have, I feel either, I have Brahimai in my can tier is the only reason that I actually like. Because uh, I think Thimba Grimbo can be a UFC fighter. I think Brahimai has to be out of the UFC after this fight. Well, he was, right? I think they just signed him, right? And if I'm not mistaken, um, I believe Bra Brahimai was out of the UFC and then got re-signed. I saw him get added on the roster watch. Um. Yeah, I mean, his last fight I mean, was in the UFC, but it was in 2022. I wonder if he took a medical absence. Uh, but, I yeah. mean, you know, the KO loss to Max Griffin, the unanimous decision to old Court McGee two years ago, a win over Sasha Palatnikov, and I don't even know who the fuck Gilmore is. So it's like his wins are against guys that aren't in the UFC, and his losses are to guys that are barely in the UFC. And I think... Yeah, Rambo, but I mean... You can copy and paste all that for Themba Garimbo. Themba Garimbo, AJ Fletcher lost, no longer in the UFC. Takashi Saito win, no longer in the UFC. Pete Rodriguez, I think he's in the koozie tier, nothing to write home about. Um, and I just think Brahamai, what a, you know, higher fight IQ, we'll call it. I mean, they have about the same number of fights. I just, that Themba Garimbo KO. It was it was flashy, but I don't know. If, like he's not like he set it up right. From what I remember, it was kind of like a winging bomb that just caught Pete Rodriguez thirty two seconds in. So, my, my yeah. biggest take on on why I like Garimbo so much is that his story is the one where he literally had like seven dollars going into his first UFC fight or whatever, and he loses that fight, and then The Rock hears about it and like buys him an apartment so that he has a place to live and doesn't have to worry about it and can straight train. Then he gets the unanimous decision, and then he gets, you know, money again. Then he comes out, and he looked really good. I mean, Pete Rodriguez in 14 seconds. How much can you see? But I just think That's he what is I'm going saying. to continue to improve because he was making it work in the worst situation possible. And so now I think having a better situation and training at the PI consistently, 
I just think he had so much room for growth that I think we're going to see it now. And especially against a guy like Brahe Mai is the perfect guy to get that growth on him. Yeah, you know, like I said, this is a no bet for me. I think there's other value to be had. Um, even after all that, you might have sold me on Garimbo one star. I think you're a kind of a wild boy for having to be two stars. I, I don't like know. I think they're very – yeah, it, I, I I think I like Garimbo less than you do, and I think I like Brahamai more than you like Brahamai. So that's how we're arriving at our difference of opinion here. They said no, no bet for me. Harrison's all over this one. I don't know, man. If you're a fan out there watching – Maybe split the difference and call it Grimpo one star if you want to. I just, uh, yeah, no bet for me. No bet. But I have three no bets on this card. I I'm, I'm, guess I'm a little gun shy after the skid. But uh, <laughs> I, have three no, I, have, I have three no bets, and this is one of them. I think there's just other fights I more, feel more confident about, other fights I'd rather bet. I'll pick Grimpo on Verdict. Cause, cause I'll, I'll, I'll roll with you on Verdict. But. See, I'm I'm going the opposite way. Shoot or shoot. I gotta, I gotta, I, if I'm going to get hot, let's get hot shooting 30, not shooting one. Sounds good, bro. Sounds good, man. So uh, we can keep it pushing. What do we got the debuts next? Uh, no, nah, we got a Adrian Yanez and Venetia Salvador. Adrian Yanez minus 390, Venetia Salvador plus 290. This for me is a no bet. It's the lock of the week on verdict, but it's definitely a no bet. Oh, no way. This is a parlay lock for me. Um, I'm, I'm actually shoehorning it in right now on my parlay. Um, God, if I do a five yeah, leg, but 390, what? I mean. Uh, minus 390, I think you can get away with it on a four leg, and we'll see how things. I definitely wouldn't want minus 390 on a three leg, but I think on a four leg, as long as it's not in the fours, I'm willing to play with it. It's just, I mean, I got Giannis as the 29th ranked Bantamweight, and there's like 80 Bantamweight. Oh, and, yeah. then, and, uh, and then Salvador, 42 ranked Cantier Flyweight. There's just. If I was setting this line, it would be like minus 600. So, oh, like, I agree with you. I agree with so you. Now, yeah. the other thing I would add to that, though, too, is that Yanez by KOTK minus 115. I don't hate that as a prop. Yeah. I, and this is like a greedy value monster thing with me. Minus money props are just a tough one for me. Like, I'm sticking my neck out here, betting a prop. Kind of. If you parlay them together, you get huge money on two two minus one tens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Hey, hey, prop, prop candidate. Like, like prop I'll just, candidate. I'll just give the people at home. I'm almost certainly going to run a Yanez uh, Abus KO KO parlay. Almost certainly. You said you said Yanez by KO is minus one ten. Yeah. It's a candidate. It's a candidate. I'll see how some of these other ones shake out for me. So yeah, I'm all over this. Three stars. As long as the number doesn't keep growing before I get to the book, it's almost assuredly going to be on my parlay. I, I can't, I can't miss out on that. Which, speaking of which, I'll be sending my bets over immediately after this, so we don't miss because there's value that's going crazy. Like, yeah, the Pierre Rodriguez line's climbing out of control, and I'm a little confused. We'll get to it, but yeah, I mean, break out, break down of this fight. You already gave it. Yanez just much better. If we get fraud check on this, that would really suck. But I don't see that happening. Yeah, um, I don't see it happening. I really don't. We can keep it pushing, though, to another potential dog of the week. We got women's strawweight, Luana Pinheiro, plus 125, Angela Hill, minus 150. I, once again, call me crazy. I, it's like a one and a half star, but I guess I'll say two because we don't do halves. So I got Luana Pinheiro, two stars. So, I, yeah, I, I'm also picking Pinheiro, strong dog of the week candidate. I got to say, I think I like Carlston Harris more just because, like, power rankings-wise, I got Pinheiro at 13. I got Angela Hill at 16. So it's not like there's some multi-tier gap. But to get plus money on a fighter who I have higher tier rank, uh, I know before the show off-air you were talking about in the last fight, Angela Hill started to actually look slower, look older. She's 39. Um, she has about a 500 record. We're both pretty high on Pinheiro. It's like... I would flip this money. Like I don't think my I don't think Pinheiro should be you know minus two hundred or minus three hundred or anything crazy. But I think Pinheiro should be like a minus one forty, minus one thirty. So if you're giving me plus money on Pinheiro, probably going to have to take it. I, I like that value a lot. I like Pinheiro to win. Like I'm going to pick. Yeah. This is one where like, I, I'm picking Pinheiro on verdict. So you're going to give me plus money on that. Hard to pass up. Now let me give you another little juice monster here. 
Uh, Pinero by decision plus two hundred. Angela Hill's never lost by anything but decision or two subs and eleven decision losses in her thirteen losses. Pinero by decision plus two hundred. Yeah, you value monster. You're talking. You're talking my language. You heard the tone of my voice change. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, like I'm writing yeah. that. I'm writing that. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm on that. See, I like that more than the Yanez by KO. I really do. Oh, I know it, but I'm just saying for parlay, you know, that, that, hey, that two, that two prop, or that, what is it, two leg method of victory parlay, those are nice. I'm just saying a plus 200 and a oh, minus oh, 110 no, no. gives you like a plus 400 parlay. I love those. I love those. And I've hit it one before. Um, I, I feel you. I feel you. I just, yeah, I have hit a couple. Yeah, good point. Good point. Um, but yeah, man, we're all over Pinero. I really like that Pinero by decision. I really do. I just, like love I said, it. I mean, props are, Props are risky bets, right? Like just by definition, like if, if you were to go to a professional gambler and ask for a safe betting strategy, props would not be on there. It would be money lines. Um, True, so we're like, but we're just good at what we do, people. I feel, I feel I just say like if you're going to by definition do something risky, I kind of want to be rewarded for it. Agreed. Plus 200. Plus two hundred is, is nice for the prop. He, here is one thing, and this is the fi- this is the close or open of the main card, close of the main card betting breakdown. We'll get to the prelims shortly hereafter. But um, with this, I also like Pinero a lot as a parlay candidate because I really do think she wins this fight. I know you don't, but I'm saying like if I'm no, a Jew, I, I do, I do. I just I'm not like uber bullish on. I it. think I, I, like I, said, I, I think having her makes. Adrian Yan is very easy to take. Like I think it makes him be on there. Like they're a, they're a duo. Like you get Yanez if you can have the balls to throw Luana Pinheiro. which is kind of similar to what we did with Ricci last week. We we uh, I think we used Ricci to get the round Besky value. I mean, which fuck didn't Rambesky. work. Yeah, yeah, fuck round Besky. But like I uh, you, you just yeah, you can if you if you're parlaying a dog or a small money line favorite with a big favorite you can get some of that value back uh, yes sir for sure brother um don't know if i'm gonna throw around mine but but point well taken um who we got up next uh so up next we got some uh debuts victor martinez plus 350 tom nolan minus 500 this is an absolute no bet for me i just don't know enough about either of these guys and the for and for instance i don't know why i mean honestly this might be one where we throw a little sprinkly on uh, victor martinez because Tapology has Tom Nolan as the number 190 lightweight worldwide, and Victor Martinez is the number 199 lightweight worldwide. So you'd think yeah, that they're very close. So plus 350, crazy. Yeah, this is this is no bet for me. Yeah, 100%. Um, especially, especially with me feeling good about some other picks on this card. Um, not enough sample size, and the sample size we have gotten out of Tom Nolan has been very bad. Martinez did not impress me. I saw anything on his topology or anything. No bet. Don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Yeah, agree. I, I mean, the fact that what this is the this is the prelim main event. I don't even understand Feature that. Like, three. I would rather. Yeah, I, I mean, I would put Abus there. Abus has main evented before. Hell, I'd put uh, Gato. I think Sada Busi's brother's debuting. Um, this might have been my curtain jerker, if I'm being honest. I do not understand that card placement, but uh, let's keep it pushing. Fuck that fight. Yeah, agree. Um, Nolan by KO is minus 250. That's insane. I, that almost makes me want to take the over plus 135 in that fight just to throw a finger in <laughs> Vegas' face. Um, <laughs> next fight, no official odds. There is one casino offering a line on it, so we'll take their line. It's Umar C versus Tuco Tokos. Uh, the one line being offered on that right now is... Uh, Tuco Tucos plus two hundred five minus two hundred fifty Umar C. So how do you spell Tuco? It is T U. Uh, where is it? T U. Oh, T O K K O S. Tokos. Tuco Tokos. Yeah, this is a no bet for me. I mean, you see yeah, that once C again, last yeah. name, and you want you want to take it, but hey, how did that help us with Walter Walker? Um, this is. This is the uh, I'm invoking the Walter Walker clause. To just debut. Yeah, we recognize the last name. Yeah, it's a last minute opponent. Still, with other value to be had on this card, and the lack of knowledge about these guys, call it the Walter Walker clause. I'm not betting a fighter I know his brother. Um, yeah, I'm not yeah. betting him because his brother's there. It's same thing with uh, Mo Usman. Like sometimes your brother's yeah. just a way better fighter, and that's just what it is. 
Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Yeah, this is a no bet for me. Looking forward to it, though. Unlike the Tom Nolan fight, I'm actually looking forward to this fight because if Umar C is anything like Sadabusi, like, he'll be a welcome addition to the promotion for sure. 100%. Let's keep it pushing to women's bantamweight, which is actually a new division for Melissa Gatto here, who is the minus 370 favorite, taking on Tamire, Tamirej Vidal, plus 275. Um, I mean, give me Gatto here, but I just don't know if I'd include her on anything. The minus 370 is a little steep, but I do think Vidal's kind of a can, but Gatto going up in weight. I, Gatto by sub is interesting here to me. Um... What's the Gato by sub number? Uh, so Gato by sub is plus 200. She has four of her eight wins, and Tamara Vidal has lost, uh, I think, by sub as her one of her two losses. Yeah, I'll put it this way, though. Dag St. Bell, U.S. Pinheiro by decision, and I like that one way more. Um, however, I feel differently about you as far as Gato as a parlay candidate. I got her at two stars. I have her as my 17th ranked flyweight. I really like her, you know, at flyweight. She is moving up, but and I, that might make me nervous if it wasn't against the can. I have the doll in my actual bantamweight can tier. So give me Gato, minus 370. I thought it was going to be bigger than that, if I'm being honest. So at minus 370, I'll throw it on a four-leg. I, I won't be a juice monster. I'll play it a little safe this week. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to shoehorn her in my... So, like, right now I have Gato and Yanez, which is not juicy, but I like it. <laughs> pays back, like it. Pays back a half a unit. Well, it's going to add to I'm not doing anything less than a four-legger, so it'll get there. It'll get there. <laughs> it's, it's a work in progress. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, all over Gato. I'm not going to go as far as to say lock of the week, because that would be Yanez, obviously. But, I mean... Right up there, man. I mean, I do not like Tamiris Vidal. I do like Melissa Gatto. Moving up a weight class, but like I said, against the can, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, yeah, g give me Gatto two stars, man. You're you at two stars with it as well? Uh, so I'll, yeah. Like, I, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just to win, yeah. I'm going to talk myself into a five leg. I already see her and Luana Pinheiro. And probably Adrian Yanez. And then I'm going to find some more value here, uh, which actually we're coming up on. Uh, yeah, we, we're, com we're coming up on the value. I really do. I really do think so. I um, agree with you. Yeah, Next up, we got this one might not be the value. I like some value in this as far as a uh, prop parlay. But Abus Megomedov, minus 275. Worley Alves, plus 225. I like Abus for the TKO KO uh Minus 110. Now, if you have a casino that will let you bet first round KO, TKO, take that bet. It's probably going to be plus money. Take that bet. Because if Abus doesn't get it in the first round, good chance he doesn't get it. If it's not before six minutes, it, it ain't Abus. But I do think he wins this fight. Worley Alves is chinny. He loves to get finished before six minutes ha hits. Three out of his last five fights KO'd before six minutes. Yeah, I mean, everything you said is, is all fair fair play. Um, Magomedov, and I don't know I don't know if Worley Alves is the guy to make it out of the first round. I really don't. I have him as a can, a middleweight can tier. So, like, I really, I guess the UFC likes Abus for whatever reason. They gave him that Sean Strickland main event. Yeah, but. They're giving him this can get right fight. I don't know why they like him. I really don't know why. They like him more than I like him. Um, I Like, how they matchmake him is crazy to me um, it's, but it's, uh, that's my point is that we have a bad take on him because he got the win over Dustin Stoltzfus absolute can doesn't matter that win is trash but then he had to fight Strickland and Baraglio like we're talking about like two top 10 guys that's tough that's a yeah. big ask and Worley Alves is probably outside my top 30 oh no I have Worley Alves at 61 so I feel you I am I'm yeah. out on Worley Alves like I think Abus is closer to 30 don't get me wrong well, well, this fight is a perfect uh, illustration of what we talked about in the little intro about, like, Kuz versus Cam. Like, I, I have Adams in my Kuzi tier, and I have um, I have Alves in my Cam tier. So, I mean, I just – especially you factor in the number to me. I have it as a one-star. It's probably a two-star. I just hate the fucking – like, I know for a fact Abus has dog shit cardio. And, like – 
putting my money on an MMA fighter that I know has dog shit cardio, like things happen. Like what if Alves survives a couple of nukes and we find ourselves seven and a half minutes into this fight? I don't know. I just I, This is a guy I do not want to put my money on. Um, I feel you verdict-wise. If no money's involved, it is probably a two-star for me. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just out. Abus has a thousand percent a hole in his game. It is a very big, obvious, important hole. I just, yeah, like I feel you. Like everything points to Abus, and he is getting fed a can here. So it's, it's almost like it would be more of a Worley Alves fade than it would be an Alves bet for me. Like that's how you're going to talk me into this. If you're trying to sell me, you know, the Honda Civic and Red here, then sell me on fading Alves more because like I'm just I can't stand Abus Magomedov. So like it's going to be a tough sell. It's like trying to get me to buy in on Abus. I just think that Worley Alves is so far past his prime that like it is definitely a fade of Worley Alves, but like he's one and. Four in his last five, and his win is over Munir Lazez, who clearly fell out of the UFC, and that was three years ago. And since then, I mean, Dalby, the decision machine, so of course that fight got the decision, but two minutes with Alaskarov KO'd, five minutes, 30 seconds with Jeremiah Wells KO'd. That's the bad one. That's what I mean. So it's just, and that was, that's 2021, and then, you know, split decision loss to Dalby literally two years later, and then. Seven months later, brutal KO. Now we're seven months later from a brutal KO. I just, I really like Worley Alves to get his chin tapped up. That's cool, man. That's cool. Like I said, if you want to do that prop, it sounds like it sounds like you're more likely to put uh, the Abus by KO prop than you are to put the Abus money line on the parlay. Am I am I reading that correctly? There's a thousand percent chance that's correct. I hate it for the parlay line because he has ways to lose. I love it for the KO value because it's his only way to win. Fair. Fair. Yeah, like if I got in my head, I have to place a bet on Abus. I'm, I'm placing the prop uh, more yes. before I place. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like I have it as a one star, but it's a prop that I have a really heavy chance to play. For sure, brother. For sure, man. Um, let's keep it pushing, man. Who we got up next? Uh, so up next, we go back to the female, uh, oh, the strawweight. Sorry, strawweight. It's not flyweights. We got Pierre Rodriguez, minus 225. Ariane Carnelosi, plus 185. How do you feel about this? Rodriguez, two-star, and strong parlay candidate, especially for your boy with those big, big money lines so far. I'm going to need to get some of that back. Uh, when I looked, Rodriguez is a minus 175. Is that what yeah. you're still at? No, minus 225. It's going crazy. This is the one I was talking about where right. value is, like, flooding. Like, we have to get her on our parlay tonight. Yeah, we do. Um, I have yeah, two stars as well. On. And it's good value for a parlay if it's four or five legs. I've already considered it Pierre, deeply. I have Pierre Rodriguez at 22, which sounds pretty high, but you got to consider there's not a ton of of straw weights. But I have Carnelosi at 31 in the Kuz tier. So I have Rodriguez above the Kuz tier. I have Carnelosi in at the bottom of the Kuz tier, approaching can tier. I like Rodriguez two star. Yeah, probably got to get it on the parlay before that line gets out of out of hand here. So I'll I'll give you the absolute key to this fight is if Pierre Rodriguez is more active than Carnelosi and keeps her on her back foot, then she wins. It's pretty much that simple. And I seemingly remember Pierre Rodriguez being a pretty active fighter because Carnelosi cannot and fight off her back foot. And Carnelosi has some time off too, right? Should be a little ring rusty, I believe. I, I don't think she's been super active, so. Uh, Back to that in it. Yeah, well. hasn't, hasn't fought for uh, over two years now. Godinez was uh, May 7th, 2022. Uh, and Carnelosi is 31. So, I mean, it's interesting, but at 5'2", I, and being a Muay Thai girl with arms that literally look like a middleweight man, I just, I don't know. I think Pierre Rodriguez, as good of a striker or better, and I think that Carnelosi doesn't really effectively grapple, so and her work rate's not high. I, yeah, like I just I like Rodriguez. I think stylistically the work rate overcomes Carnelosi. Me too, me too, brother. Um, but yeah, man, we're, we both like Rodriguez. Probably gonna throw her on the parlay. It sounds like. Um, keep attention. What we got? Men's bantamweights up next. 
Yes, sir. Yeah, we got Alatang Heli at plus 125 and Clay Deson Rodriguez at minus 150. Now, I will give you my initial take on this fight is I was like, ooh, Clay Deson Rodriguez. I feel like I like that name. And then the more I look into it, the more I'm like, I think Alatang Heli has fought the better competition and honestly looked better. Oh, a thousand percent agree. I have I have played Zen Rodriguez in my cancer ranked sixty eight. Um, oh, okay. The, yeah, I am out on Clayton Rodriguez. And now I have Alatang Haley at forty nine, and so that's where I'm debating my star level here. Like, I have Alatang Haley above Kuzi tier, and I have Rodriguez in my can tier. Like, that kind of sounds like a three star to me. But I'm just. You know, I like Alatang Ali more than Rodriguez, but like 49, it's not like I love Alatang Ali, and you initially liked Rodriguez, so that sounded more two star than three star, right? That, we, we can't go three star on Alatang Ali, right? No, no, or, no, or, no, 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 because okay. like his wins over Chad and Hellinger and Kevin Kroom are absolute can wins, so they're not the most meaningful wins. It, 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 in all fairness, Ed Hellinger is at the top of the koozie tier, not 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 a can tier like that. Okay, so fair. I met, but but if you remember the Casey Kenny fight, that's where Alatang Heli we thought ate the gnarliest kicks we've ever seen and didn't get finished. So it already speaks to his ability to survive. I like that. Chris Gutierrez, same thing. He just got brutalized by a guy that beat his legs and body to shit with kicks. Now, then you got to ask yourself: Is Clayton Rodriguez going to beat him up with kicks? I don't remember Clayton Rodriguez throwing a lot of kicks. Yeah, and, and Alton Ali, I believe, is going to be the longer fighter. Um, yeah, man, I like Alton Ali. Two star. Sounding pretty dog of the week. Is he has a, he has a bigger money? All right, I guess that's the question. Who do you like more, Alton Ali or Carlston Harris? Um, what was Carlson Harris's line? 15. So, I mean, basically the same value, a little bit better on Alateng A. Lee. We got to pick one of those guys as our dog of the week. Wait. Maybe not. What about, uh, the, the woman, the female fighter that we liked? Uh, and, you know, see, I yeah. like, I like, I have her as a one star and I have the other two as a two star. So I know for me, no, I, uh, man, I like Pinero a lot. Um, I mean, out of all those, I'd put Haley higher than Harris. Okay. Fair. I'll like, roll with that. Oddly I'll enough, like, that. Carlson Harris is probably my least favorite of those three. Okay. I, I will tell Yeah. Right. As of now, I would say Haley is my dog of the week, man. At, uh, yeah. I, I think I might have to get a little straight on there, a little two-unit straight, uh, perhaps. I like um, it. I like it. We got one more fight to get to, though, and then we can get into our uh, parlay and official the official underdog prop for each of us, official prop for each of us. Uh, but this last fight is going to be women's strawweight opening up the card. Vanessa Demopoulos plus 260. Emily Ducote minus 340. Um, it's a no bet for me. Really? I mean, I love Ducote, but... See, I, I, I have Ducote by Cantia. I am out on Dakota. You might have ah. just talked me out of something. Yeah, no, I'm picking Demopoulos, bro. No, I mean, no, no way. Tiny monster. What? What? Yeah, like what? She what, just what, lost like, to Kovalkiewicz a year ago. And we both agree Kovalkiewicz is terrible. No, when she fought her, we did not feel that way. And I agree, but Kovacavich maybe Kovacavich we were having... We stopped- Established Kovac which was like in the koozie tier. You're like going back on like our own takes here. Like, like we. Yeah, I just I can't bet on Vanessa Demopoulos. I can't. It, please elaborate. <laughs> like, I mean, bro, just the wins aren't worth anything. And then, like, if you look at the height, the age, like all the analytics are against her, and her wins are worthless. Let's go to Dakota real quick, if you don't mind. Like she has losses, to, she has losses you... to Corey McKenna, Lupe Godinez, JJ Aldridge, Karolina Kovalkiewicz. Anyone that's like worthy of being They're a UFC fighter. They're almost all ranked. Those are all worthy oh. UFC fighters. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think Dakota is a worthy UFC fighter. Oh, see, I do not. She's fought oh, way no. harder competition. 13 and 8. Right. It's 2 and 2 in the UFC. Lupe Godinez, Jessica Penne, Angela Hill. Yeah, lost to Angela Hill, lost to Lupe Godinez. Those are good wins. And then uh, Yoder, I, I don't believe is 
I think both of her wins are not still signed. And um, if I'm to, not mistaken, to also be fair, she has she was four and four in Bellator, so it's not like the eight losses are like regional scene. Like she has, what is that? Six professional like big time losses. See, like, and and two of them are Alima Lay McFarlane, who's one of the best female fighters on earth. Oh, bro, I just. I view them as pretty similar fighters, and to get get Demopoulos at that big of a number, Demopoulos is four and two in the UFC. Fought a very similar schedule. I mean, yeah, the yes, loss but to Kevin, 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 her wins that's are about all what, cans. And I think that Duco is a can. That's my point. Like, like she has proven to be able to beat like Ducote's the same level of fighter as a Jin Yu Frey. I. Okay, right, let me my, give you a, d- let me give you another problem. Ducote has a four and a half inch reach advantage, and they're both strikers. And Ducote throws two times as many strikes. She's more active with a four and a half inch reach. All right, I'll say this: you talked to me out of actually All, like, putting it's, money. It's on this. it's not even that. Like I love Ducote. It's that every analytic favors her in this fight. So there's no way I'm going to bet on, on Demopoulos. That's why it's a no bet. It's not that I'm like putting any stars on Ducote. Yeah. So I, I have Demopoulos at 24 in my koozie tier. And I have I have Dakota at 36 in my can tier. Um, so that alone, I'm going Demopoulos. You talked me out of two stars and you talked me out of actually putting real money on it. I'll say, though, gun to my head, I have to bet money on one of these girls. I'm betting on Demopoulos. Like, I, I'm going to pick Demopoulos on verdict. I, uh... Yeah, and I, that that plus what what's it, what's Demopoulos' number? Plus two twenty five. Plus two sixty. Dude, that's see, see I, I and, and so Vegas is agreeing with you. I'm not going to be a stubborn fucker here. Like I'm going to listen to you. I'm not going to put my hard earned money on it. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, money just keeps coming in on Ducote, man. It, it's the analytics of the fight. Like, there's just not a good path for Demopoulos to win this fight because it's not the way she fights. Tie me out of it. Tie me out of it. Friends don't let friends place bad bets. I won't place money on it. I'm still going to pick Demopoulos on verdict. Um, you're, you know what? It's, I'm not going to be stubborn here. I'm not going to be stubborn here. Um, so, that being said, now I almost need a fourth leg here. Oh, we got plenty of legs. You got Yanez, you got Carlson Harris. What a uh, well, see. I'm thinking about Gato Rodriguez Haley. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put Alatang Haley on my parlay. I'm gonna bet the Harris straight. Okay. Okay. I think that's gonna be my strategy. Um, so Harris, you said you thought. D-Mac? Yes, but in, in, in all honesty, it's Alatane Lee, but I'm going to throw Alatane Lee on the parlay to get back the value on Yanez and Gato, and then my dog straight is going to be Carlson Harris. Because in my – I have them both as two stars. I'm taking your Alatane Haley lean. Um, that's why I'm feeling more confident. I'm going to put that on the parlay to get the value back. So right now my parlay is sitting at Yanez, Gato, Rodriguez, and Alatane Lee. I know you're probably going to swap one of those out for Pinero. That's all fair. Don't hate it. I think I'm going to go. I'm still going to get a Pinero ticket in, but that's going to be my prop of the week. I like Pinero by decision way more than I like any of the other props we talked about. That is also so I think my we prop lo- of the week. Yeah. So official prop of the week, Pinero by decision plus 200. Love, love, love that. Dog of the week is Carlson Harris almost by default. And then my four legger is going to be Yanez, Gato, Rodriguez, and Alatang A. Lee. And if you don't mind plugging that in the parlay calculator for you, boy. Yeah, absolutely. Let me get it open here. Um, if you'll read me their odds real fast. Yeah, yeah. So we got Yanez at, where is he at? Minus 390. We got Gato at minus 370. We got Pierre Rodriguez at minus 225. And we got Alateng Lee at plus 125. That is plus 419. Plus 419. And then just to be a snoozy bastard, will you remove the Alateng Lee one and let me see what that's looking like? Yeah. Plus 130. 
Yikes. Okay, so that Alex Ng Lee is the parlay saver there. Um, and then I don't know. I imagine you're going to do Giannis, Gato, Pinheiro. What's your parlay you think looking like? So, um, I'm going back and forth between whether Carlson Harris or so my fifth leg is going to be a dog. I'm going to do your same, but add Pinheiro or Harris. Ooh. And I'm probably going to add Pinheiro because that's the one I was bullish about. So I feel like I kind of have to run it. And that's plus 1068. Plus 1068. So with as the five legger, Giannis, Gato, Rodriguez, Altamir, and Pinheiro, plus 1068. Yes. That sounds sprinkle worthy to me. I mean, that sounds. Sprinkle worthy to me. I don't. I, I might do both. I might do. I might do two units on mine, one unit on yours to ride it with you. No uh, diddy. No diddy. And then I have one that I think I'm gonna run that might be a little more risky here. Um, more risky than so plus ten sixty h the safe one. <laughs> yes and no. It, it's more risky in certain ways, right? So it's gonna be uh, Lerone Murphy, Thimba Garimbo, uh, Abus. Rodriguez, and that's probably it. This is like my anti parlay. This is like a hedge parlay for me. But <laughs> so let's see. We got Grimbo minus 140. We got Lero Murphy minus 140. We have uh, Pierre Rodriguez minus 225 and Abus minus 275. If I could replace Abus with someone, I would love to. So in that case, who should I replace him with? I would say. Maybe Carlston Harris. I like Carlston Harris because I haven't played him anywhere else. So that would be the time to play Carlston here. Uh, That four-legger is plus 813. Plus 813. I know you hate it, but I I like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, all all fair and love war and betting MMA. Um, Yeah, man. Um, So it sounds like we're not – I guess you're riding my four-legger and adding a fifth leg. I think it's fair to say the official – Parlay is the four legger, right? Yes, yeah, plus four nineteen. I don't think that's anything yeah. to scoff at. And I mean, if you put twenty five bucks on it, you get a hundred back. So exactly, exactly. Dog of the week: Carlton Harris slash Alexing A. Lee slash Luana Pinheiro. We have, we have dogs. We're giving you dogs this week. Um, oh, I, I like all three of those dogs. I like all three of those dogs. Um, and then prop of the week is Pinheiro by decision. Um, some honorable mention prop of the weeks that y'all may want to flirt with, play with. See, see, see what strikes your uh, fancy uh, here. Uh, uh, also, the Yanez by KO, Pinero by decision. Kind of love doing one of those KOs in the decision. Yeah, see, I almost like the the, the Abus KO at the same odds more than I like the Yanez KO, just because it's a bigger man, yeah, you know, a little more it, power. Yeah, it's fight, fight, kind of the way probably, he does it against a chinnier guy. It's a chinnier guy, exactly, because the flyweight's going up to bantamweight, so it's going to be nice and hydrated. And um, DMAC, that two legger pays plus four seventy three. See, I but all right, you're telling me I got to do one risky, juicy sprinkle. I almost would rather do your five legger if we're doing a one unit sprinkle. I think I almost would rather do your five legger at plus ten sixty eight than I would the two legger prop. Um. Yeah, but maybe I don't know the two legger prop. Like I really like the Pinero decision because if she wins the fight, right, then she's gonna win a decision. I don't think she finishes Angela Hill. I just can't see that, right? But I do definitely yeah. see her winning. So therefore, decision, boom, plus two hundred. And then Abus, exact same thing. It's like when you bet Derek Lewis and got the crazy number. I wish this number would be that crazy, but Vegas ain't making those mistakes anymore. Yeah, like I said, if my sports book offered. Uh, method and round, I would be all over the juicy ass mag. I think that's the way to bet this. If you bet, use like an online sports book, or you know, you have some access to some sports book that offers all the crazy props. Abus in like round one KO. I mean, that's the bet. I mean, that's that's the real prop. But my sports book doesn't offer that. I, um, I would just also like so. put out there the over two and a half rounds for Angela Hill Luana Pinero is minus five sixty right now. Ooh, so Pinero by decision is it's looking nice. Yeah, plus two hundred. Uh, love it, love it, man. But uh, yeah, another fun episode, man. We're gonna get these tickets in this evening. 
and uh, like and subscribe and um, appreciate y'all checking out um, our other videos and uh, check us out on X at Beefy at Beefy Breakdown and on IG at Beefy Boys Breakdown. Appreciate y'all watching.